the First Coast's most accurate forecast from the First Coast News Weather Team, certified by Weather Rate, sponsored by AC Designs. So here's my theme. We'll take a look at the bank, take a look at the clouds, and my theme for the last 24 hours has been it's not as bad as it looks. And you can take that meteorologically or on any other topic. Okay, let's take a look. Let's go to the radar and we're going to expand the picture and we're going to talk about the storm that never got a name. What I'm talking about, folks, is if you're with us all last week, we talked about the fact that the National Hurricane Center was watching an area just east of us and we wanted to make sure you were aware of it, but that once it formed, we thought it would go to the Carolinas, which it did. Well, the National Hurricane Center issued a tropical storm warning, although they never actually called the system or gave it a name. Nonetheless, and we'll talk more about this, uh, but some areas, especially in southeastern North Carolina, in and around the Wilmington area, received well over a foot of rain and winds gusting to almost 70 miles per hour. As that heads west and northwest, it's actually beginning to bring in some drier air. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, but elsewhere in the tropics, the only other system is Gordon. Gordon actually has weakened to a tropical depression, and even if it does re-intensify, it's actually going to stay even farther away over the open Atlantic. So at least for us, although there's a lot going on around us, no immediate tropical concerns. Stay tuned. Those waters are still warm in many areas of the tropics, but no concerns for us, at least not for the next five to seven days. Okay, let's use the wind direction to paint the picture. So I think you can see an area of spinning winds here. That's the low pressure system. And this marks the front. And what I mean by that is, for instance, right now, we have a lot of clouds. But if you, if you want to know where the rains are heavy enough to cause flooding, follow where the frontal system is and where it will be. So here it is around the low and then down south. And it's pretty much going to be the theme this week, at least in Florida. But although we will have occasional showers, the front's going to be off to our south. And so the potential for any new flooding from rainfall will be pretty much south of us through the week. So it's a little bit of good news. On the other hand, because of the strong winds we've had with those two big fronts over the last 30 days and the rain, and now we're headed toward the super moon, uh, the tidal waters, that means anything that's connected to the ocean. That's the St. John's and all of its creeks and the estuaries. That's about two feet above normal. Now to put that in perspective, folks, that's kind of what a tropical storm does as far as a surge. So what this means is we may have some sunny days if you're in an area close to tidal waters where some water may actually back up through the drains. This is another uh, pretty extreme example. And have what happens this time of the year in combination with rising seas. Notice the surf temperature has continued to drop a little bit. All that little bit does help. Let's go back to land. I think a lot of us will start off with fog in the morning, but then enough sun. Look at these temperatures. We haven't seen that in a while. Now there'll still be some showers around impacting about 40% of us. Wednesday, I'm going to call it almost summer like, although still a few showers around even less of a coverage of showers on Thursday which means maybe a few inland areas may make it to 90, but for a lot of us, we'll get a breeze and that should help us somewhat with heat. I would love to say for the next seven days, we're going to be completely dry. We're not. We're going to have some showers, but at least through the weekend, I don't see any rains that will add additional flooding, at least not rainfall flooding. 